oil disappears from, pretty much disappears from the energy mix by 2050 in any of the scenarios where you hit that 80% carbon dioxide target. In most of the scenarios, and I emphasize most, electricity demand is much, much higher in 2050 than it is now. We could have an electricity system that's 50, 60, 70 percent bigger than the one we have now. And the only time that there were exceptions to that was where lifestyle change leads to lower energy demand, so our lifestyle scenarios that are, I, men I mentioned uh, got there. When we constrain demand heavily on the grounds of energy security, that also brings down your electricity generation. And some of the environmental constraints also uh, lead to lower electricity demand by 2050. Electricity demand falls in the midterm, and that's because of energy efficiency. That's a fairly strong message. We don't think the scenarios say anything about the mix of nuclear power, renewables, and carbon capture and storage going forward because each of these can make a substantial contribution to decarbonizing electricity. There's more than one way of doing it, and the degree to which these technical options play a role is really a matter of choice for ourselves. Important to note on the role of renewables, in none of our scenarios do we meet the Renewable Energy Directive requirements for the UK. I mentioned that we took as our starting point 2007, that was before the directive was agreed, so we let the model decide itself what was the least cost way of doing things, and in none of the scenarios was the Renewable Energy Directive even approached in terms of where you are, so some interesting messages there. Other high-level messages, and this really is high-level, I think we showed that we could achieve a low-carbon energy system. It's technically feasible, it's economically feasible, the cost is affordable if you do the numbers, possibly about 1% of GDP by 2050. We can debate whether that's affordable or not. I personally think it is. There are multiple pathways to getting there, and the big, big trade-off is the speed of reduction of energy demand versus the decarbonization of supply. Absolutely critical issue. And to emphasize, I think a point we want to make, we don't think there's enough emphasis on energy demand in the, in the policy picture at the moment. Energy demand brings multiple benefits. It ensures you against supply technologies not to, not to deliver. It protects you of the social resistance to certain supply technologies developing. And it's very helpful in protecting you against price shocks and import dependence. So for all these reasons, we think aggressive promotion of energy efficiency and conservation technologies is it, the least way of driving down emissions. It's the one that should get a lot of focus in the short and medium term. So as I say, I mean, that's just a, a quick snapshot of what we did in the project, dipped into some of the elements of it. It's all available on our website, so you can go through the hundreds of pages of uh, detailed analysis, and if you're dead enthusiastic, you can download the spreadsheets as well and uh, look at all the details. But thanks, thanks for listening, thanks for your attention. Do we have time for questions? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, any questions then? Yes, um, are, are there similar studies going on for other materials? For instance, copper, because copper is an important part of your high electricity situation. Yeah, we are actually, our technology and policy assessment function, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning, is actually carrying out an exercise on strategic materials at the moment. Now, what it's doing there, it's not necessarily going to produce the answer. There's a lots of disagreement about...